Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Watch Out. This channel is all about my watchmaking journey. It's not a watchmaking tutorial channel, but hopefully by watching me probably make lots of mistakes, you might learn something too. So this is the very beginning of my watchmaking journey. I've never done anything with watches. I'd like to. I intend to learn how to. But I'm going to start with this alarm clock. It's basically the same as this, a Smith's alarm clock. And in a previous video, I did pull this movement out of the clock, but that's as far as I've gone. So in this video, or series of videos as it may well be, my intention is, is to strip down and rebuild this movement because obviously this is going to be a lot more forgiving than learning on a watch movement. Everything's much larger, everything's much less precision, so it should just be a whole lot more forgiving, but I'll still be able to learn the basic principles of how to rebuild a movement. And even in this movement, as I start to learn a little bit of theory, it's interesting to know how the basic parts of a watch are still here. So for example, on this side, we have the motion work. So unsurprisingly, this is the side that the, the face goes on, the face sits here. And so here we have the motion work. So what we have here is, this is the cannon pinion here. And then we have the minute wheel here. And then this is the hour wheel. This extra wheel here is to do with the alarm function. So uh, that's not actually part of the motion work, strictly speaking. But um, yeah, it interfaces with the motion work for, to set when the alarm will go off. So we have a motion work. And then on this side, it's a little bit hard to see because we've got this, this base plate here. But we do indeed have a train of wheels. So if we come around uh, this side, we see here is the balance. And we can also see, it's a little bit hard to see, but it's just under here, is the escape wheel. Here's the escape wheel and we have our train of wheels. So normally the first wheel is actually the, the barrel or the mainspring. So in this movement, we have an open spring. It's not inside of a barrel, but on the bottom of it, right here, we have this wheel. So this is actually the first wheel. And then the second wheel, is the center wheel, so there's the center wheel. And then we have the third wheel and we have the fourth wheel, which then connects to the escape wheel. So we have all of the, those sort of normal parts that we would find in a watch movement, but obviously we don't have a keyless work because there's a key, there's the key there. And there's no switch, there's no keyless work mechanism to switch between winding the watch and setting the time because those are separate functions. So this spindle here, which connects straight to the back of the motion work, that's what we use to set the time. And then we use this key to wind up the watch. And then there's another key here that winds up this spring and this spring is power for the alarm. And this one here is what sets the the when the alarm goes off so but all of the the those kind of things are there so um yeah so let's dive into it so i'll take this hour wheel off again so that it doesn't fit uh, doesn't get lost Okay, so the first thing we need to do in any movement before we start taking it apart is to make sure that there's no power in the spring. So this is the alarm spring here. If I wind it, you can see that I've actually got the watch set to the position where the alarm goes uh, off. So basically it, it releases the power. But what I need to do is just take 
the um, bell off so that I can get into here just to get as much power as we can out of this spring. So that's all that the bell is. That just comes off there. So I can just pop these guys back on so that it doesn't get lost. I don't want this plate to fall apart just at the moment. Okay, now there should be a way then I can just get that extra power out of the spring. Okay, so there is, so I can actually just basically just do this with my finger. And we can just see that power coming out of the spring like this. There we go, look at that. There, see how it's nice and loose now. So this is the end of the spring here. Just note to self, this is the end. It's just wrapped around this post. Okay, so that's that spring. We also need to make sure that we have let all of the power out of this spring here. This does have effectively a click. Yeah, there it is there. It's probably going to be a little bit hard to see, but just right through there, there's a little spring here. And it's kind of like a piece of flat wire that's got a little hook on it and it engages with the teeth. Basically, if I pry it out, There we go, like so. It allows this spring to unwind. However, there still is some power in this. So what we can do I believe that if I remove the um, if I remove the pallet, then I'll be able to get the last of that power out. Now, unlike a watch, this doesn't really have it doesn't have bridges. For the various parts of the mechanism effectively there's one bridge which is this rear plate Let's see if there's enough give yep there is i think there'll be enough give yeah there we go okay so there we go there's the that's the pallet fork and one of the things you'll notice that's quite different about it from a watch movement is that it's got these two pins. So I'm guessing this is what you call a pin pallet fork. I don't know for sure. Someone can correct me if they want to. But there's no jewels on this. So in a watch you'd have an entry jewel and an exit jewel and basically the feet of the pallet fork itself would uh, engage with the escape wheel. This doesn't have that, it just has these pins, and those these pins are what engage with the escape wheel. So, yeah. See that? That's the last of the power coming out. Now that the pallet fork is out, there's nothing to... Nothing to stop those wheels from spinning freely. Ooh, now, I have got to be careful here, because I've noticed something a little bit catastrophic has happened. Ooh, something potentially very catastrophic, and this might be my first mistake live on camera. When I took the 
pallet fork out, I was not careful that I've still got the screw, the nut out, which is probably part of the problem. That's better. Ooh, that was close. Did you see that the, um, the balance popped out as well? And in these things, the balance is not one piece. So we don't want that to happen at all. Oh, there we go. There it goes. You wouldn't want to do this with the thing fully wound up because you just have gears flying everywhere and you damage something for sure. Yeah, so I've got to turn this wheel towards me. Yeah, see how that's all nice and out? So that's probably pretty good, I'd say. Okay. So, I think the next thing I want to do, just to avoid the risk of damaging it is to take out the the balance because it is quite fragile and if that's damaged then that's really the end of the watch unless you find a replacement so the end of the um, you see this hairspring, this is the part that makes the balance work. It functions the, exactly the same way that a pendulum works. So with a pendulum, the period is directly related to the length of the pendulum. And the balance, it's exactly the same. Period is directly related to the length of it. So you shorten it it will run faster, you lengthen it, it will slow down. Now, the way these are set up in this clock, there's the end of the hairspring just there, and it goes through this little slot, and there's a wedge there. If you saw my previous video, I did a fair bit of fiddling around here, and I'll probably need to do some more, but this wedge just comes out, And now the, um, the hairspring just comes out of this slot. There's a slot. Don't do that. The slot is part of the watch. Just have to rotate it around a bit. There we go. That's it. So I'll just ease this plate off again, and it should just. Should just pop out. It's not going to do it now, of course. That's all right. I think um, there's this little funny shaped headed screw on the bottom here. And if I turn that this way, Yeah, it slackens it off. Okay. All right. So there it is. It's the hairspring. So you can see it has these pointed pivots on the top and the bottom. So I guess one of the things I need to be doing as I'm 
embarking on this journey is I have to think to myself as I pull things apart, is it obvious which way that it goes back in? I mean, yes, I've got the video to look at if I really get stuck, but that's kind of cheating a little bit, I suppose, as you know, if you really know what you're doing, you shouldn't have to go back to the video to find out which way things go. So anyway, um, this can only go in one way because the hairspring has to line up with this slot, which is at the top, so it can't possibly go in that way. So that solves that one. And also with the pallet fork, again, that will be pretty obvious that it can't go that way, it has to go this way. You can see a little bit of um, surface rust on the shaft. I'll have to come up with a plan to be getting cleaning up this rust. So now we have this um, this little spring-loaded clip is um, is what's holding on this shaft. It's, I don't know if you can see, but there's like this round hole and there's a slot that interfaces with this shaft. So basically, while this spring clip is here, this back plate can't come off. Um, Apart from these four, one, two, three, four nuts that are holding this back plate on, this is the only thing that's holding this on. So once we can get this off, we'll be able to disassemble the entire watch. So we, what we want to do is get this out. I take this out of the way. Give me a bit more working room. We want to get this out without making too much of a mess. Okay, I am sure that the factory would have had a special tool. There's this little um, tongue that goes into this hole that locates this spring-loaded clip. And surely the factory would have had a tool just to prise it out because um, otherwise you kind of got to scratch up the plate to prise it out although it wasn't as bad as I thought it might be and there we've got that loose now there we go so again it's pretty obvious that this only goes one way But you can see that I've put some scratches uh, on this plate, which is not ideal. So, with that piece out, theoretically, and I say this theoretically, I'm just thinking of something that Pin Palette noted in his video. See the um, rust around this shaft? This plate's got to come up this way over this shaft. And I suspect that that's going to be a little bit tricky with that um, rust on the shaft because its diameter will have increased. But anyway, um, Let's give it a go. The other thing that I need to be mindful of, as I mentioned before, this doesn't have bridges like a watch does. It just has this one um, top plate, I guess you'd call it. And all the spindles, all the mounting holes are in the plates. So there's a mounting hole, there's a mounting hole, there's a mounting hole. Pivot holes, I should call them. All the pivot holes, there's a pivot hole. There's a pivot hole there for... There's a pivot hole. So all of these pivot holes, so theoretically what will happen is 
when I take this plate off, everything will fall off, which is not really what I want to happen. Because um, I do need to know where everything goes. So I need to be especially careful in doing that. So anyway, let's just get these loosened off for a start. One of the other things too about these is that there's there's no movement holder because obviously it's too big for that movement holder so I'll just have to kind of work like this which is again not ideal. So these two nuts here do not have washers. So this is the um, alarm side and then this side is the mainspring side, these nuts do have washers. Okay. So now let's just see how this feels. Starting to get loose bits. So this plate here, this is to do with the alarm mechanism. It has two pivots, one pivot there, one pivot there. So they go here and here. Gosh, those pivots are not even round. Look at that. It's just a stance piece of metal. Obviously, you know, the reason why this is built like this is because it has to be built to a cost, to a price. So I just want to be careful not to damage any of these pivots as these things come up. And it does look to me like it is getting caught up here on this shaft that has got, is all rusted. Yeah, so these pivots are just sitting freely so I might take those out if I can. If I can, that is okay. So there's the escape wheel. Yeah, it's obvious which way around it goes because the um, the teeth on the bottom engage with the fourth wheel, and if it's around the wrong way, it won't engage with anything. So that's the escape wheel. This is the fourth wheel. This is the third wheel. And I won't be able to get the center wheel out because it's got a can pinion on it. So that will just have to stay there for now. Okay, so this is the, the clanger for the bell, obviously. So this 
notch here seems to line up with this post and I think it would be it's to control the travel as to how far it can go so so that goes in there okay so I've cleaned off the corrosion which wasn't too difficult let's see now whether this will actually come off okay so we got it so what I did is I had to grab the shaft with the pliers like so and then push up from underneath it's very very tight it just wasn't going to come out without persuasion so there we go look at this this plate is now free need to make sure that there aren't too many things that are free okay so we have this spindle here which interfaces directly to the alarm spring so that's part of the alarm functionality notice it's got this unusual sort of a shaft so that's for the alarm Okay, there we go. So basically you have the ends of the springs they hook onto, well that one hooks onto there, and this one hooks onto here. So I'll just leave those in there for now. Because I have on the underside, this guy has come out, but I'm guessing I'm guessing it was probably on here. I think this is one that I will have to go back. Uh, mm. That looks better. Yeah, that'll be how it goes there. So there's this funny little um, metal leaf spring here, which is to do with the alarm mechanism. And yeah, that looks correct. So this will be the minute wheel. Put that with the hour wheel. So there's the cannon pinion. Now it is, I would suggest, a force fit, but the shape is different to the cannon pinion that you have in a watch, and it's also much bigger. So you can't use a normal cannon pinion remover on that, I don't believe. So that may well just end up staying there. Um, and this, this piece here is held in by this um, clip. There we go, that's how you get one of those off. So it goes, oh, there's actually two slots. I believe it was in the top one. 
may have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure it was in the top one. Okay, so clip. Then, I don't know what we'll call this, the alarm setting wheel, because that's what it does. And yeah, again, you can see how tight this guy is. Okay, he's out. So that's this one here. The alarm setting wheel. And you can see that this plate is riveted in to its mounting plate. And yeah, that is actually everything apart from this is the center wheel. And um, yeah, I don't think it would be a good idea to try pulling that cannon pinion off without proper tool to do so. So that's this movement disassembled apart from just one last thing, and that is these, which should just come out. So as I was looking at the watch, the, the, the movement, they're like this. So the one on the left is the one for the alarm. And the one on the right I'm almost thinking those look like they're designed not to come out. Oh no, there it goes. So that one's for the alarm. And this one. Sorry, that one was for the power. That's the mainspring. And this one's for the alarm. There we go, it's off. So you can see the um, click movement built into the bottom of the spring. If we have a look at this one, this is the main spring, the same deal. Quite a bit of oil on this one, which is nice. But yeah, that's, that's how the click and the click spring is, it's all one piece. That's how it works. Pretty nifty. Okay. So. That's all the pieces out. Of this um, Smith's alarm clock. Not too many of them. But um, yeah, the next step will be to get them cleaned up and also try to uh, de-rust them as, as best we can. Don't really want to have rust on the spindle, so you can see this is a, this is a fourth wheel. See the rust on the spindle, it'd be really nice to get rid of that. So a little bit of cleaning work to do um, before we can reassemble. Okay, so I now need to de-rust these parts. Well, I don't need to, strictly speaking. I think it'll work fine. It's not super bad rust, but Certainly want to get rid of it just so that it you know, looks cosmetically nice in a watch. Obviously, rust would be uh, need to be dealt with, but uh, everything's a lot less precise in this clock. So I've already done this um, shaft, which is to do with the alarm mechanism. So the way that I did that is I just used a little bit of this uh, wet and dry 
paper and I just did this. So I've got this um, wheel here and it's either the third or the fourth wheel, just can't remember which one it is. But um, yeah, you can see that the this shaft is quite rusty. Now, it is okay to do this because the shaft doesn't actually interface with anything. If it was something where the dimensions were critical, then yes, we'd need to be probably not wanting to do this. So if we look at the, we look at the motion work, we can see the hour wheel has got this surface rust on the actual wheel itself. And so I want to deal with that as well. I'm going to have a go with this little scratch pen that I've got. This is a fiberglass scratch pen. And at the very least, get rid of the get rid of the loose rust. Okay, this is the stuff that I'm using, a vapor rust. Um, should be able to just get this from your local uh, automotive products supplier. I got it from Super Cheap Auto here in Australia. So I've just got a little container with some in here and I'm just going to pop that one in there. And um, when I get the other ones cleaned up, they'll go in there too. Okay guys, so this is my first attempt at cleaning clock or watch parts in the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, I do not have a watch cleaning machine and I don't plan to buy one just at the moment because they are quite expensive. But I've got this ultrasonic cleaner. Now these parts are quite large so I could clean them manually. I'm going to clean the balance manually. Uh, I haven't put the balance in there. So what I've actually got here is I've got this um, jar here. It's not full of deviled ham. It's got the parts in it and it's got isopropanol in there. And then in the bath is just water. So I'm, I'm hoping this will actually work. Um, now I guess theoretically if I were to take the lid off, uh, who put the lid on so tight? That would have been me. Oh gosh, now I can't get the lid off. There we go. Theoretically, if it's working, we don't need to put a bit more ISO in there. Oops. If it was working, I should be able to see bubbles in the actual jar itself. And you know what? I can see bubbles in the jar itself. So that tells me this is actually working. Because being ISO, it'll just um, evaporate fairly quickly, which is why it needs to be in a sealed container. And obviously the ultrasonic cleaner is not a sealed container. So, yeah, that's the plan. This thing will run for, oh, I guess that doesn't matter. This thing will run for half an hour. So, I mean, the parts were not especially dirty. The dirtiest part was the springs. So we'll see what they come out looking like. Uh, again, they're so large that I could manually clean them. But yeah, we'll leave this running. We'll take the parts out and we'll see what they look like. And we'll go from there. So here we've got the balance, we can see the spring there and I'm just going to clean it with a little bit of contact cleaner like so, just on the end. I think that's really all that it's going to need. It's pretty clean anyway as it is. So. Just make sure these pivots are clean. I think they'll be fine. Okay guys, so I've got everything cleaned to my satisfaction. I've made sure that it's dry. These uh, large plates are just cleaned in water. 
uh, and but then I gave this a good spray around the center wheel with ISO um, so just before I begin to reassemble this movement I just need to have a look at um, lubrication of a few things now to lubricate this I'm just going to use um, super lube just like a, a light machine oil, it's usually used for like motors in things like um, CD plays and those kinds of things. I do have watch oil, but I don't want to break it out for uh, a movement like this that is, you know, pretty, pretty low end, shall we say. And as I said, also, this thing is not especially um, high precision. Well, I might actually have a go at doing I'm now. I would never do this on a watch because you would end up with way too much oil. But remembering that this thing is much bigger than a watch, I'm just going to have a go with the Tubo Super Lube. Let's see if I can get this in there. And just a dab. That's it. Let's get it all through the... Okay. So I now want to try to remove the excess oil, which is, might be a bit tricky, but I've got some Rodigo here, which is kind of like a, a watchmaker's, it's, it's like blue tack, but it's made by Bergeon. And yeah, I can just see that's taking up, hopefully you can see as well, it's just taking up that excess oil in these teeth. So this is the alarm spring I'm just debating whether I should try to apply some grease to this spring I'm not actually sure how tight that it gets when it's wound up but there is this grease which I've got some of here, it's um, Nobius 8200 and it's actually designed for uh, mainsprings so you imagine on a watch when this is coiled up really really tightly it just prevents anything um, seizing that shouldn't seize so I'm thinking I might just have a go just for the exercise of adding this on I don't think it's really necessary but I want to learn the technique so let's give it a go Okay, I did do that off camera. I'm not sure whether I achieved a huge amount, but I also added some grease just to here. You can see this is the click that I talked about before. So this is a sliding part. And I just put some of that same Mobius 8200 grease on there. The data sheet for it does say that you can use it for any kind of application where you would use grease. So I think it's perfectly fine to use it there. So now we need to start looking at putting this thing back together, which means orientating myself with how this goes. So when we were looking at it at the beginning, this was the bottom because the, the, the um, balance, the balance shaft sits here. Okay, and so our top plate Again, here's the adjustment here for the balance shaft, um, for the balance length, balance spring. And so this piece goes on like this. But obviously we need to have all of the parts of our clock in there as well, if we want it to be a clock. So...
first of all, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil just on here. Not sure whether this will achieve too much, but this is the adjustment for the balance. Uh, it would just be nice if this is just oiled, I think. Okay guys, so I made a bit of a blue and then I started trying to put it together. But then I remembered that this has to be in there first. So look, I know I've got the video and I can go back and watch the video if I need to. But um, part of this is, is learning how to put things together and understanding how they go. I hope that makes sense. So this spring, I believe was here. So yeah, you can see there's this little tab on the spring just here, it has to line up with something. There's a notch here. So that would be where that goes, like so. That's it. And then this is the wheel. I haven't quite worked out how it works yet, but it engages the, um, it engages the alarm. So this wheel goes back up here because it's like a little cam arrangement when this pin is there it forces the wheel down which pushes on this spring which must poke this tab through yeah that's how it works this tab engages with something on the other side Uh, so that goes through there. And there was also this clip. Now there's two little notches. And I thought the clip went oops, throw it away. I thought the clip went in the top one. So this is going to be a little bit tricky to do perhaps. I'm trying to hold about five different things here. I think it's on. I just hope that that's where it's meant to go. You know, I'm not convinced to be honest, because it's loose. 
this slot here is actually a lot tighter. It still looks loose, but it actually feels a whole lot better. But anyway, I think if it's wrong, it should be possible to change relatively easily over to the other slot. Okay, so that piece, that's where that was. Okay. So, now these guys need to go in here. Oops. Alright, that one goes there. This is the mainspring. And it goes there. And it's just got a tuck down. So you can see that the main spring, there's a cog on the bottom of it that interfaces with the centre wheel. Right, now for the fun part. We'll see in a second. Okay, so that's why that wheel that transfers power from the um, this spring for the alarm has got such funny teeth because it interfaces. It interfaces with the hammer. So basically, as this as this rotates. It will drive the hammer back and forth, hence ringing the bell. So that piece goes there. Let's see how we go. All right, so what's happening is it's rocking on the, um, the pivots for the springs. Ah, ooh, okay. That was not exactly what we wanted to do. Oh, okay. So these pivots are quite tight. And I don't believe that I've got the third and the fourth wheels correct. No, 
No, that's definitely not correct. That must be, that must be the fourth wheel. And this must be the third wheel. Okay, so the wheel that I had in there was not engaged with anything. And now it is. That's better. Definitely engaged. And so now come here, fourth wheel. can't go in that way, so it has to go this way. That's it, that's it, perfect. So it sits above the third wheel and engages the bottom part of it, engages with the third wheel. And then Yes. Then see how the I'll get the tweezers out of the way. See how the escape wheel has got these long, long gears on it. They engage with the fourth wheel. So actually, I can probably pop the escape wheel in there. It should be a good idea. It should go, oops, not there. It should go underneath. Uh, I said it should go underneath. Okay. Back in your pivot, you. That's it. Okay. They're all sort of sitting in their bottom pivots now. So I think the trick is going to be to ease down ever so carefully on this train of wheels because I sort of like have movement at both ends, if that makes any sense. So if I can ease these down, probably not that far. Just I think about this as it goes down who's going to be first because yeah that's the trick do them in lateral order so 
the third wheel will be first. I think that's got it. And then kind of the fourth wheel and the escape wheel need to be done together. Yeah, looking at this angle, I can actually see the... Um, uh, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Oops. That's all right. The escape wheel does not mate that way to the fourth wheel. Check this again. Third wheel is mating to the center wheel. Fourth wheel is mating to the third wheel. It must go this way. It must do. Because it can't go any other way. Process of elimination. whole thing popped out down this end. Okay, I have an idea. Pop on a nut so that this can't do that. So I'm using a, um, a Maggie lamp so that I can see, but the problem with the Maggie lamp is that basically I, I can't see in three dimensions anymore. So I lose depth perception, which makes it a bit tricky. are in. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. Well, don't know I'd go as far as perfect, but it's in, so... I'm just going to pop these screws on here just so that this can't pop out. Now that they're in. Okay. 
Right. So this fellow, which you'll recall was so difficult to get out when I took the watch apart, fell out of his shaft. Okay, so... Okay, yeah, so we do have that circlip in the correct place because the top circlip is for that other funny little clip that will hold this in place. But I don't want to do that just at the moment because I'm going to need, um, I'm going to, need to get these parts into their um, pivot holes. So... This funny wheel which drives the, there we go, he's in his hole. Then the clapper, gonna go in his hole. Then, This one here, there we go. Let's pop that in there. Tighten these nuts up. All right, I think um, I think everything is actually in its pivot hole, except for the um, the pallet fork, and obviously I haven't put the balance back in yet, but. Yeah, I think everything is, well, apart from this thing, which keeps falling out again. But, um, yeah, I think everything is more or less in place. So the next step is for me to gonna make sure that it uh, kind of works the way it's meant to. This thing's not supposed to be there, though. Uh, okay, that's better. It's meant to be there. All right, I'm gonna put the pallet fork in now. So I just need to be able to lift up at this end here to do that. Okay, don't pop out everything else. Yeah, of course they have popped out. Oh well. Just gonna have to loosen off this a little bit. It's one.
two. Alright, that seems alright. One pallet fork. So now the only parts that are missing of the movement is the balance and the motion work. I think it's probably a good idea to put the um, put the minute wheel back in place. So I'll just put some um, oil on this shaft. Should have done this with tweezers in the first place. That's better. Yeah, look at that. All right, so we need to get this clip in and basically I need to make sure that this shaft is as far through as it can go. Uh, and That's down, but the shaft won't go any further because there's the clip on the other side. Yeah, so I cheated and had a look at Pin Pallet 20's video. Thank you, Pin Pallet 20. It has to be engaged with the slot, and it can only be engaged when it's sort of hanging down over the sides of the plates. Otherwise, because of the spring tension, it's impossible to get it to engage. I hope that makes sense. So now it needs to sort of be slid around into its home position. So we just need to get this little notch up like so and then there like that. Okay, so that is now in position. So, apart from the um, apart from the balance, the watch is now the clock is now together. So it should be possible to put some power into it and just kind of make sure that things are working as they should um, because there's no point going to all the effort of putting the balance in and then discovering that something is wrong so if I put these guys on
Okay, so this is the this is for the alarm. Also, it helps it'll help getting these um, springs out of the way because you remember that I'd wound them all the way, unwound them all the way. But normally they don't unwind this much. So they kind of get in the way. Okay. So the way that we can tell whether the watch is the clock is going to work is by moving the pallet fork back and forth and each time I move it back and forth the um, skate wheel should move and it does. So what that tells me is that power's running down the train so I can see the fourth wheel moving, I can see the third wheel moving and if I look careful and carefully just trying to get that where hopefully you can see it. The center wheel is moving as well. It has to be because um, the power comes from the first wheel, which is the spring. And if power wasn't getting through, then the escape wheel wouldn't move. So that tells me that that is working the way that it should. So now I just need to check that the alarm is working as it should. So I just need to put this little knob back on here. So I haven't put the motion work back in yet, or the um, I haven't put the hour wheel back in anyway. But it's this interface between the minute wheel and the alarm wheel that determines when the alarm goes off. So what should happen is if I wind this, oh there we go. There we go. You can see the alarm's going, and if I do this, which is the same as pushing the button from up there, it stops. So we need to install a balance spring, and just to aid in that, I'm going to ease this down. This is like an adjustment for the balance spring, which is kind of a bit tighter than I'd like it to be, but. I wonder if I put a little bit of oil on that, whether that will help. Hmm, I think it did help a little bit actually. See if we can get the balance in. Yes, there it is. Mm. I think I slacked off a little bit too much. See if we can get it. that's it. There's just a fraction of a millimeter of travel, which I think is what I want. Now, okay, the pin on the balance wheel is now engaged with the pallet fork. So now, this is a part, I had to fiddle around with this um, 
when I was familiarizing myself with this clock. Now I've got to get this hairspring lodged into this slot, held into this slot using the wedge. And this I did have a fiddle around with last time and it absolutely drove me bananas. Okay, so that certainly was a learning experience. This hairspring is now looking nice. So I had to take to the wedge with a hammer. I was trying to use solder, but the solder's just too soft. So I had to take the solder off and then take to the end of that wedge with a hammer so that it would actually function as a wedge again. And so basically this spring has to be in the right position laterally and it has to leave at the right angle, otherwise it will distort the shape of the spring. Uh, and also I think this spring has kind of been a little bit distorted in the past because um, as I was sort of like moving the adjustment around, it was kind of changing the shape of the spring badly. So it's not 100% perfect now, but it's pretty close, I think. Um, so hopefully that's about right. So anyway, I'm not going to fiddle with that anymore, but um, I haven't oiled this movement yet. So that's what I'm going to do now is oil this because that also will uh, hopefully as one would expect help the clock to run more happily cheat a little bit with some of these big ones because I'll be here forever doing it with these oilers. Okay, so I think what we need to do now is you recall there's two washers to go on here and then I can zip this up because I think this movement is now done. And if we've got to put the bell back on, of course, as well, which goes on the other side. One washer nut. I have no idea whether this clock is still running too fast. I do not have a time grapher at this point. I won't be surprised if it is running too fast still, which if it is, it will be because of the hairspring. There isn't really anything that I can do about that, except replace the spring, basically. Replace the balance. So we've got one more wheel to go in here. Put some oil on here. 
すごいもんねはい。state where it goes off the alarm. So the alarm is now on because we need the hour hand and the alarm hand to be pointing at the same place because that's when the alarm is going to go off. See what we've got here. I've got some hand presses, but they're all too small because they're for watches. So we'll just have to do this the old fashioned way. Now this has got to be pointing at six o'clock as well. Ooh. Okay. Hopefully that's it now. We need the minute hand、It、needs to be on the hour. So it should be up here. Hopefully, that's it. So, We set this to seven and now wind this around to seven.
Hmm, something's not right. I think I've got half an idea what it is. Too bad. But I'm going to have to take the face off altogether again and do this all again because see how this face has got a spring in it? it means I still haven't got these lugs right. So that's a real pain. Okay, so I think we've got this more or less together. I did make a mistake, which I've corrected. You may have picked it up as I was putting it together. But basically, there's a... I remember how I noted that it didn't seem to be ringing quite the way it should. And that's because there's a little spring here on this arm. And I had this spring sitting this side, the wrong side of the post. It's supposed to be under there. So that was quite easy to just slacken this nut off to allow this plate to come up then this pops out and I could reinstall it the way that it's meant to be. So yeah that's meant to, um, yeah it's ringing a lot better now and um, yeah it's meant to um, push this arm up. To allow this to to work freely okay so that's um, that and you can also see that these springs remember I put some mainspring grease on these springs and they look really well greased so they're not going to bind up just take a bit of the excess off so yeah I'm quite happy quite happy with this now. The only one thing that is a bit of a problem is that this front dial is a little bit a bit convex so it wants to pop out this way and there doesn't seem to be really anything that I can do about that. And the problem with that is it's pushing against this hand here and if it becomes loose then it won't rotate the way it's meant to which will be a bit of a problem for the alarm function. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. So now all we need to do is to pop this back into its case. So I'd imagine that should probably be up there. And I'll need to take these off. Oh, stop that. That one off. That one off, this one off. Yeah, that felt pretty good. And then we've got these four nuts here to go on here. Get 
those up. Whack these on. Oh, that's working, that's good. Yep, perfect. Okay, now that just pops on there. It's got a bit of damage, so I try to think where it would look best, probably with it down the bottom, I think. And then finally, this ring. Look at that, it's back together. So I'm just gonna set the correct time on this and I'll leave it run, because I would need to get an idea. I haven't regulated it, so I'll need to see how sort of like fast it's running. I think it probably is still gonna be running a bit fast, but we'll see whether it's still got that, got that problem. Give me an idea where we're at. Okay, so I've let this clock run overnight, and yes, it is still gaining about 15 minutes or so every 12 hours, uh, which is what it was doing originally. So I suspect that the hairspring has been fiddled with on this thing uh, by a previous owner. So the only way to fix this will be to replace the hairspring. But that's okay, this was a, an enjoyable exercise I think for the first time for me ever pulling a clock apart and pulling it putting it back together and it's in the same state that it was when it came apart and I've learned a lot doing so as well so I really hope that you enjoyed this video coming along with me on this first part of my watchmaking journey if you did please give me a thumbs up and especially subscribe to my channel I can't tell you how much that helps me especially getting a channel off the ground from nothing it's, it's so hard in those first few months, so absolutely reliant on you for subscribing. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye for now, and watch out.